Oh, hello. Hi. I didn't, I didn't see you there. <laughs> Welcome back to Fordham Firesides. As you can see, we're next to a fire for the first time ever. Uh, I'm your host, Hank Michaels. You just caught me in the middle of reading a book by one of my favorite artists, Jeff Tweedy, of uh, the acclaimed band Wilco. But today we're here to talk about a very different artist. One of my guests here today, Tom Morris, uh, he's a big fan of this artist. Tom, who are we going to talk about today? We're talking about Kanye West today, Hank. Oh, really? Yes, one of my favorites. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> one of my favorites, too. So we're going uh, not. We're gonna stay away from, you know, him as a person, the politics, the controversial stuff. Never a fun conversation. <laughs> yeah, we don't do that. At least, you know, not right now. I think we got to have more to this, these flames. But, uh, yeah, we're just going to talk about our favorite albums by Kanye, Best to Worst, something uh, similar to what I did earlier in the year, but, you know, different because it's on one artist, and we're ranking his discography. So there's going to be stuff on there that we don't like, some stuff that we do like, mm -hmm. and one album that we think is better than the rest. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom, out of the ten albums that Kanye has put out, and for those that are watching, we did his eight main releases plus his two collaboration albums, not including... Cruel Summer, which is something else entirely. Um, so starting with number 10, what did you have there? Um, number 10, I was you know, kind of fooling around with the last eight, and I think that Jesus is my least favorite. Really? It is my least favorite. Doesn't mean I don't like it, but it is my least favorite. But it, it does have some awesome tracks on it, for sure. Um, Black Skinhead, always gets you going, you yeah. know, for sure. Yeah. Um, Start a good night off with that song. It makes you want to drive like a hundred miles an hour. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. He's just good album. We'll talk about it later. Uh, my number ten's Yay. Um, I don't dislike this album. In fact, spoilers. I don't dislike any of his albums. Uh, uh, Yay is actually it's like really interesting because it's like the most like uh, introspective of all of his, all of his albums. Like it looks at him as a character, like his state of mind. Like it's it's pretty deep at points. But overall, like listening to the album, it sounds just like the worst parts of Pablo. Yeah, like, it's that. just like a little boring to me. I like Yikes, I like um, <laughs> like Ghost Town's pretty good. Mm -hmm. There's another one I was thinking about. Like I like the way it opens with "I Thought About Killing You." Like that's like a cool track. But overall, it's not something I go back to a lot because it's just not as interesting from a musical standpoint. Yeah, definitely. Um, I actually had that as my number nine. So oh, I just kind there of go into go. that. Uh, yeah, I think the same thing. You know, it's a short album. Uh, it's kind of him right now with his like mental thoughts going on. It's a little bit different. Um, it's a shorter album for sure. Um, but uh, you know, I like it overall. It's a good album. Yeah, yeah, not bad. But like Ghost Town, I really like Ghost Town on that too. Ghost Town's cool. That one grew on me. Yeah, but, um, yikes it's definitely is, like a jam. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, <laughs> yikes is the one I'll like actually go back to the most. Yeah. Um, uh, my number nine is 808s and Heartbreak. Um, this is like one album that people like seem to love so much, and I don't really understand why, because it's not bad. It's definitely groundbreaking. It definitely really influenced the rap industry as a whole, like with artists like Drake and stuff. Um, but I mostly, it's, it's like poppy. It's soft, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it, it lacks like and like the energy or aggression or it, like anything that made the rest of his albums great. Oh, also, uh, RoboCop sucks. That song's not good. And well, I like I like like uh, Heartless is a fantastic song. I love Love Lockdown, but overall, like it kind of puts me to sleep a little bit. I know I'm gonna upset a lot of people with this, but uh, it doesn't do it for me as much as his other stuff. But I appreciate what it is. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for my, um, what were we on now? Eight? Eight, yeah. Yeah, my eight is Kid See Ghost. I'm Oof. probably disagreeing with you here. <laughs> um, it's kind of like, uh, kind of like Yay though again, right? It's a little bit shorter. Yeah. Um, I do love Kid Cudi. I love Reborn. Reborn's such a good song. Great song. You know, and I think like a lot of people like that too. Even if you're not like a huge fan of Kanye or Kid Cudi, Reborn really like drives it in for you. But... My mom likes it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, yeah, where you go, Mrs. Michaels. <laughs> um, but no, it's uh, it's definitely a good album, but it just doesn't make that top half for me yet. Sure, sure. Uh, my number eight is Watch the Throne. Um, there are some seriously awesome songs on that album, like uh, the one the one where they're in Paris. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, 
favorites. I, I like No Church in the Wild. I honestly don't like Otis uh, that much. That has like one of the messiest samples on like any Kanye song I heard. Like that just like does not work for me. I don't know why. It just it sounds like. Uh, but I love Gotta Have It and Murder to Excellence. Those songs are like yeah, incredible. Murder to Excellence, yeah. But a lot of stuff like Welcome to the Jungle, like it's just. I don't know. It's uh, It feels like it's not all there, and the songs, a lot of them don't click for me. It just comes across as a mess a lot of the times, but I can't deny the fact that like so much of the songs on there, like at least four of them are just awesome. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, number seven for me is 808s. Uh, so that does have Heartless on it. That's got to be my favorite song in the album. Yeah. But I yeah. kind of think that is like, kind of like the first half of Kanye's career almost, and he's like trying to like break into like... Um, you know like a totally new element mm -hmm. and he's close to it but he just doesn't hit it with every song so uh for that reason it's number seven for me yeah but still a good album still like one of his like og albums i feel yeah like. you appreciate what it does you appreciate what it does it does bump but um you know overall it's number seven yeah uh my number seven is Jesus. Uh, i guess we're both like we both don't think it's a top half album i yeah. know a lot of people think it could be his best i just don't see it because uh one there are some great tracks on that and i i will and i have been saying this about all his albums because he knows how to make great tracks but a lot of people like praise it for being really experimental and different but it while it might be that for a kanye album it's not that for rap in general like yeah. i've heard stuff out there that's like wilder like harder um and it's just like kind of him like stepping into that like area of rap music just a little bit mm -hmm. and it doesn't always work i like the way he samples songs like especially right off the bat with um on site oh yeah on site is like the like the weirdest like, like off the wall song and yeah, then it yeah. just cuts and goes to like this choir sample of like these kids singing from some church in chicago and that sounds awesome and like new slaves does something similar i love bound to oh but, yeah bound to yeah I forget about that yeah but, but for the most part like a lot of it is just it's like too much noise without enough like depth to it to make me appreciate it enough yeah definitely. um but yeah like solid album just not all the way there for me yeah i would say like uh that song too i am a god i'm not a big fan of that one i just yeah. don't like i don't like the beats in it i don't really like the lyrics so but you they know. love putting that in video game trailers yeah <laughs> <laughs> and power yeah yeah they love putting power on commercials and yeah yeah all right, what's your number six? Uh, number six is College Dropout. Love the album. Ooh. Love the album so much. So old school. Uh, Jesus Walks is by far my favorite song in the album. Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, it's definitely the old Kanye feel, though. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's heavy beats, um, but, it, you know, great album overall. And, you know, it's like one of those albums you can just, like, jam to if you're just hanging out at home, you know what yeah. I mean? It's not exactly one I would, like, start my night to, but, um, you know, it's definitely a good hangout album. Sure. For sure. Sure. My number six is uh, Late Registration. All right. um, this, I feel like, uh, out of all the albums on my list, like I'm not too married to where it's placed, and I think that's like my own fault, and that I just have not listened to it enough. Because um, every time I do listen to it, I immediately just think this is like more of the same with College Dropout, which mm -hmm. isn't a bad thing, but it's not doing enough different to make the album stand out for me, besides uh, like Gold Digger and Touch the Sky. Touch the Sky is like one of, like top three Kanye songs for me. Really, I love that song. I love uh, Diamonds from the Sierra Leone, and yeah. I love Drive Slow. There's some great songs on there, but overall, like, I never listened to it all the way through, like as much as I should, just because I'm like, I think College Dropout does this better. Mm -hmm. But with time, that could change. It's just it, it's not as unique for me because every Kanye album feels like it does its own thing, with the exception of this one, which almost seems like a B-sides collection for College Dropout. Albeit like a really good one, but you know, it's like part two of college dropout. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. My my number five is late registration. Okay. So yeah, yeah I mean you know Gold Digger's classic, right? I yeah. feel like that's like the main song that like everybody knows, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're like a parent, if you're a kid, everybody knows it. Uh, you, you know, it's a good pump up song. Yeah. Um, also love heard him say, you know, it's just oh, like yeah, a really yeah. catchy tune. It's catchy sampling. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, altogether, I think it flows well, and he just kind of makes that number five for that one. Uh, sure. But, you know, definitely a great album for sure. Love you it. like it more than College Dropout, then? I like it a little bit more than College Dropout, just like a little bit Just because of, like, specific songs? You think? Yeah, it's specific songs, you know. I mean, I think every album has their main, you know, three songs you listen to. Yeah. You know, and yeah, um, that's true. I just feel like that one has more songs like that that I really do enjoy. Yeah, that's that fair. That I, like, play continuously to this date. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, my number five is uh, your shirt. 
Life of Pablo. Uh, this is a, this is an album that just gets better for me over time. Uh, it is the messiest album he's ever made. It is yeah, it, it is so all over the place, and it, it was like by like by design. It, that's why it was like that. He released it. it was supposed to be like this like uh, transcendent music project that he like updated over time. But really, that was just like his excuse for uh, fixing some tracks that were kind of not great at first, like Wolves and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he switched it up too. Yeah, he, yeah, he switched up some stuff. He added that other song like Saint uh, Pablo, Pablo to the end. Um, but just like as an experience, it is also like the most Kanye album out there because yeah. it's it, like it's a, like a perfect representation of who he is. He's like, I guess, like a perfectionist, uh, but also like kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, but the songs on there like are just there's some incredible songs that like blur the line between like banger and like experimental art piece, mm-hmm. like with songs like Famous, uh, Father Stretch My Hands Part One, how they have like elements of like a typical Kanye song but then they just get like really weird and stuff yeah and even towards like the middle and second half of the album there's some stuff in there that I just question like why it's in there in the first part in Mm -hmm. the first place like uh fade don't really like that song uh don't really like all the little interludes and skits he does yeah me I'm a huge fan of that like the fact that this spans like 16 tracks is just like too much but like all that aside like he has some of his like most insane tracks and I just think it's like a really cool album from start to finish. Um, just like the first four songs alone are like a great example of that. How yeah. everything can feel so different from each other, but feel like consistent, but like a consistent mess. And you have to like appreciate it for what it is. And I just think it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, I think it's a great album. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are we on now? Number four? Yeah. Uh, my number four is Graduation. Ooh. Uh, the second half of this right now is it's so hard to kind of place them yeah. in which order, you know, and I think about it, like, which order do I listen to them in, like, how often, um, everything like that. But, you know, it's just got songs, right? It's from 2007, and, I mean, songs like Can't Tell Me Nothing. Oh, right yeah. Now. I mean, Great it's just song. such, like, a heavy song, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, it really bumps. Uh, I can always put that on, right? If you're going for like a run, if you're trying to go out, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's a great overall song. Uh, stronger as well. Oh yeah. You know, there's just so much power in that song. Uh, Homecoming and Good Morning. Good oh, Morning yeah. is awesome as well, because you know the whole album I feel like is pretty. It's pretty up album. Yeah, yeah. And then he puts Good Morning on that. It starts off, you know. Yeah, it's just like a heavy beat. It's, it's a like, heavy Good beat. Morning. Yeah, you just want to, you know, bump your head to it. Yeah, it's an interesting way to start an album that's like so poppy. Yeah, that, that's also rap. Uh, it's my number four. Also, it's it's a great album. It feels like such like a like a timepiece of two thousand seven. Oh yeah. Of like the bling rap flashy era, but it for the most part. Like some people say it doesn't age well. I kind of dis- disagree. Like I get that it feels dated, but I also think it's like nostalgic in that way. Yeah. And the only songs I think that like don't hold up that well are Drunken Hot Girls and uh, Barry Bonds, but I still kind of like those songs. Um, it just, it, it, um, and like the fact that like Homecoming, they have Chris Martin on there is such like a weird choice for someone to be yeah. like, on their out al- on on a, a rap album. I just like the risks he takes sampling Daft Punk, Steely Dan. And it's like, it, it shows that he was really ahead of his time. Mm-hmm. And also it's just catchy track to catchy track to catchy track. Yeah. Champion, Stronger, Flashing Lights, yeah. Can't Tell Me Nothing. Like I love that song, that album, like front to back, even those two I mentioned, like I still kind of like them and they're not enough to like ruin the album. For yeah, me. no, I mean like that's one of those albums too. It's like, I definitely have my hits on there that I like and mm-hmm. I'll play more often. But then I'll go back to it and I'll listen to like the songs I don't listen to as much. Even yeah. Like Barry Bonds, right? I'll put that on. And, you know, that song, it's definitely not one of my favorites on the album. Yeah. But I still appreciate it for what it's worth. Yeah, it is kind of like, I find myself like in my head being like, and here's, here's another, another hit, hit, Barry Bonds. Bonds. And that is like the most 2007 ass song that yeah. you can possibly find. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but like it's, yeah, I like it and it yeah, fits with the it's album. It's a fun song. It's yeah. A fun album overall. Yeah. So number three. Oh, yeah. Number three. Um, so this one. It's, uh, I've got Watch the Throne for my number three. Wow. Yeah, I love Watch the Throne. I've always loved it. Okay. Um, what did it come out in? Seventh or eighth grade for us? 2011. Yeah. So, so probably seventh. I don't know. Yeah, seventh or eighth. Um, so, No Church in the Wild, um, in Paris, Otis. Yeah. You said you weren't a huge fan of Otis. I have to disagree. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I just, I love the sampling in that. Um, and, uh, and then also, I mean, in Paris, 
everybody, I feel like everybody's heard The one heard we're it. there in Paris. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's heard that a thousand <laughs> times. It's so catchy. Yeah. Um, no Church in the Wild also just, it's just a mean song, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I like that one. It's, it's just like some of it, uh, yeah. Some of it doesn't work for me. Some of it I don't like the one with Beyonce. I don't like that second track. It feels so... Is that Liftoff? I think so. Yeah. I'm not uh, I'm not a huge fan of some of them, but overall, I think it's... Yeah. Um, it's definitely has some incredible songs, but it's just like too much of a mixed bag for yeah. me. Plus, I like the Kanye-Jay-Z collab. You yeah. Know what I mean? Sure. I mean, just the two of them together, it's um, it's like late 2000s. It just sounds... Uh, or 2011, I Yeah, guess. yeah. It sounds amazing, though, overall. Yeah. I like what the two of them do together. Yeah. Some cool stuff there. My number three, Kid See Gus. You're Big surprise. Pr- yeah. I mean, you're happy it's not like number one. Yeah. Uh, I love this album so much. It's so good. It is one of my favorites of the year so far. It is um, uh, one of the best rap albums of the decade, I think for sure. It is very different, and I understand that a lot of people don't like it or are turned off right away. But I think it's like really like pushing things forward yeah. in rap with in terms of like making things that can be catchy, but also like re- really experimental. And I think Astro World was another great example of a popular album to do that this year. But um, I never was a fan of Kid Cudi. I still don't really like any of his albums that much. But he like surprised me on this because he, he and Kanye go together so yeah. well. And this album takes like everything I like about old Kanye, like the soul sampling, like he samples like Christmas song by Louis Primo or yeah. whatever, and like turns it into these really like crazy like songs that are completely unconventional. Like the first track, the only rap on that track is from Pusha T, and then you just have Cuddy going, I can still feel the love, yeah. and then you just have Kanye making gunshot noises for the rest of the track. And it sounds awesome. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and then you have uh, the next track opens up with um, uh, Fire, has like this really like kind of like rolling soul beat, uh, kind of sounds like a March song, and Kanye's like rapping into like this like shitty sounding microphone, and then slowly like the quality gets better, and that's just how it starts. I just think that sounds sick. And then Fourth Dimension is great. Uh, that's probably my favorite on the album. Free is crazy because it's just like, they're just seeing how many different, like, weird, energetic ways they can scream free yeah. in, like, a melodic way. Uh, Reborn's a fantastic track. Mm-hmm. Really beautiful, really, like, nice. Um, and then the last two tracks, Cuddy Montage, where she's, like, rapping over a Kurt Cobain se- yeah. uh, sample. And then Kids See Ghost, the title track, has, like, Kanye's best verse on the album. And, like, from front to back, I think that thing is just, like, a powerhouse of songs. Mm-hmm. It's really different. And it can be challenging at first, but like when you get into it, it's like one of the most rewarding listens to come out in like a long time. Yeah, no, I think that was like one of those albums. It's I love Kid Cudi, like old school Kid Cudi. Yeah, um, I was always a big fan, and then obviously I'm a Kanye fan, so I was like a little at first when I listened to the album, I wasn't impressed with it, and also it's like one of those shorter albums. Like, yeah, I don't like the longer ones. I like a little yeah. bit more variety. But it's one of those albums, like, the more you listen to it, the more you like it, I feel like. Yeah, for sure. And so, like, if you listen to it, like, maybe two, three times through, everything, you can really start to, like, understand all they put into it. Oh, yeah. I get something more. It makes like, a lot better, I think. I get something more out of it every time. And it doesn't seem too short for me. Even though it's, like, a 25-minute album, like, I feel like it's a complete experience. I don't, like, need more from it. Yeah, Um, I guess that's true. Yeah, anyone who's like listening to that album and you hate it, just like please just, give it another try. Like, yeah, it's take so like good. an hour out of your life. <laughs> yeah, to it twenty-five somewhere. minutes and like really think and really listen and just like appreciate how fantastic it is. Yeah, no, it's a great album. Yeah. Uh, so my number two, right? Yeah. Uh, my number two is the Life of Pablo. Okay. Um, you know, it's like you said before, it's a long album, right? Mm-hmm. There's like a lot of different. A lot of different stuff going on um you know there's definitely a few tracks in there i don't love mm-hmm. like i don't love fade that much yeah um but i did see this um in concert at the uh at the meadows freshman year oh yeah so this is when i saw him live and he started it out with father stretch my hands part one mm-hmm. and they just restarted like the first 15 20 seconds of it like several times through and it got the whole crowd super hyped up and then once it finally like played all the way through, <laughs> everybody in the entire audience was going insane. That's awesome. I mean, it was the most like lively thing I've ever uh, yeah. experienced before. Um, and then you know, just going through it, I mean, old, uh, "Father Stretch My Hands" part one is one of my favorites. Yeah, I love um, that song. Yeah, I like "Famous." I love "Waves." Yeah. Um, I love "Ultralight Beam." I forgot to mention that too. That's yeah. great. Oh yeah, "Ultralight yeah. Beam." Um, 
No More Parties in L.A. is kind oh, of like yeah, a fun so song, good. too. Another, I love that song. Yeah, it's super fun. Him and, and Kendrick go off. They really do. And um, also at the end, uh, St. Pablo. That was yeah. like a late added yeah, song, I guess. Yeah, it's a really good song. Yeah, it was added pretty late, I think, too. Mm-hmm. And um, I love that song. I listen to that song all yeah. the time. You know, it's kind of like a, like a bonus song, I guess. You could yeah, it the is. Album. Yeah. Um, but all together, I mean, it's just like... Um, it's just a masterpiece. I mean, he has crazy songs on there like Silver Surfer, right? Isn't, Which isn't is that like, someone like talking on the phone yeah, or something? It's yeah, it's just super weird, you know, and he just throws it in there. Um, Frank's track, like, they're Which, all just kind of like weird little yeah, bits yeah, put together. It's, it's a bizarre album, but it's, it's a really it's, bizarre album. But, but it's think, pretty great. Yeah, together, that's just a masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, my number two is uh, College Dropout. Um, it was a big debate for me whether I wanted to put, you know, this one number one or number two. But I think I, you know, it could be number one, but it's so good. It's like classic Kanye, and I think it's one of the greatest rap albums of all the time. Oops. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's low lights. Kanye's <laughs> going to get, like, my video taken down now for playing five seconds of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, like, the album's so good for, like, take, like, every song is built on top of, like, these soul samples. Like, it feels like, like a, a blend of so much of the music that came before, and Kanye took it into, like, this his own album and like made like great track after great track like uh my no off well, we don't care uh jesus walks through the wire like all these songs are so good and it all flows together like immaculately mm-hmm. it tells like the story of like him being a college dropout yeah, it right. also talks about themes of like school and like paying for college and all that stuff and it like works so well and it just sounds awesome like, yeah I have it on uh, my record player and it sounds like perfect on that. Like it's oh, one yeah. of, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's a great album. Yeah. And, um, and he, the, some of the choices he makes were like really different for rap at the time. Like the yeah. one song he did with Jay-Z, um, uh, what, what, never let you down. Yeah. I love that song. Cause like the entire second half of the album is like a spoken word part for some, from some like random poet from Chicago. And it just sounds like awesome. And it's, it's like a bold album. It's super catchy. It's fun. And, I don't know. It's a masterpiece. Yeah. I think the only reason I don't have it higher on my list is just because um, the first time I listened to it, I like it was already exposed to Kanye. Yeah. You know, I feel like if I was like, um, if the first time I listened to it was when it came out, sure. it might be higher up on my list because I could yeah. appreciate it more for what it did. Um, but, I, you know, I, I, I guess I discovered the album once I discovered another Kanye album when I was younger. Um, yeah. But overall, I mean, it's a good album. It's so hard to rank these two. Yeah, it is. It is. I think any of these like last three could have been my number one, and any of like the top five could have been flipped around for me. Yeah. The only one actually I've got to say is my, I really know the place is my number one. Oh, my number one too. Yeah. It's, uh, I love it featuring Lil Pump. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the single, yeah. Yeah, the single. That's the one. That's a real gem. No, yeah. um, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy is by far my favorite album. Yeah. Uh, everybody that I live with knows I love to put it on all the time. Yep. Um, and also, like, that, with that album, it's, like, my number one song on it. It's constantly changing. Really? Yeah. I mean, right now, um, it's gorgeous. Yep. It's just, yeah. it's so good. Yeah. It's, it's I love so that good. album. It's my number one also. It is the first Kanye album I've ever listened to. Yeah, I think that's the yeah. same for me. And it's, it's like, a masterpiece. If any, any of you saw my, like, top ten of the decade, you know it was pretty high up there. Uh, I think it's... It's just like the way it starts too. It's got like one of the best opening tracks of all time. Oh, yeah. Dark Fantasy. Dark like, Fantasy. Yeah. It sounds like just like a choir people singing, but even though it was like a sample, then it like rolls into Gorgeous, which mm-hmm. might be my favorite. Um, and actually, no, Power is my favorite, which Power is the next song. That's yeah. Power is my favorite Kanye song. That is like the greatest rap banger of all time. I think that song is so good. Yeah. It is so good. And then Monster. Actually, you know what? I don't like all the lights. You don't, I don't like all I don't, the lights. I don't hate it. I love all the lights. That's I mean, you like you gotta the, listen to it with the uh, the interlude in the beginning. I know I've listened to it. Yeah, that's like my least favorite part, mainly because I don't like Rihanna that much. Okay, but, um, that could be it. But I don't hate it. It fits with the album. It makes sense, so it doesn't like make the album worse for me. Clearly not, because it's my number one. Yeah. But uh, like everything, Devil in a New Dress. Uh, How about Runaway? Runaway, too? fantastic. It starts off with the, um, you know, I guess like the keyboard. Just like the p- one just, piano just, note. Boop, yeah. Boop, right? And it does that for what, like 30 something seconds? Yeah, yeah. Uh, unbelievable, for sure. And then um, one of the favorite things about this album, too, is have you ever seen the uh, full length video for it? Yep. That's a masterpiece, right I there. I love that. I mean, that is unbelievable. It's 
it's so creative. There's so many different things thrown into it. Yeah, like it. the ballet and the dinner or whatever. There's the ballet, the dinner, there's like the, um, whatever that peacock is. Yeah, the, the peacock lady. That's the my woman, favorite yeah. part when he's like playing power on like the little, one of these things. Yeah, like, like this. Yeah, with and she's just like buttons. going like that or whatever. Yeah. It's bizarre, but I love it. It's um, so bizarre. I lo- also love, like I mentioned for graduation, how he was like doing things people haven't done before with like sampling like different artists. Like Kanye on uh, Dark Fantasy, like basically took like Bonnie Vare, who is like this like folk artist under his wing and brought him in to like work on the album. Yeah, no, he's Flew a huge out success. To, yeah, Bonnie Vare is a legend. I love that guy. But like he's is, has like an instrumental part in the album, especially in like the last two songs, like, Who Will Surv- uh, Survive in America yeah. and Lost in the World and then Monster, he's got a part. Um, but it just shows like his respect for the entire industry, not oh, yeah. just the rap industry and how creative he is. And that's like, like that, it, it the album is so good. Yeah. It's, it's overall, I mean, we, I could talk about this album all day yeah. um, and I could play it all day too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's overall great. Um, but you know, gorgeous takes number one for me. On Probably. That album. Um, and then, you yeah. know, I've always thought that Runaway was like my favorite one on that. Yeah. It's kind of switched recently, but yeah. I mean, that is, that song is unreal. What's the John Legend and uh, Chris Rock song again? Oh, uh, that's at the, um, <laughs> what is that one? Uh, Blame Game. Blame Game. Yeah. That, uh, like, beautiful song. Yeah. yeah. And then Chris, yeah. they just like throw Chris Rock yeah. on there for like he, a while. <laughs> yeah. Even though it's like a weird comedy bit, like, the, like the piano that's playing during the outro, like, sounds like great. And it's really like relaxing and nice. And uh, it's, it's a really like powerful, hard hitting album that's also like stuffed with like bangers. Yeah. And it's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. What more can you say? Yeah, nothing more. <laughs> Bye.